I'm going to run the full electrical system test on this truck behind me. The full electrical system test will guide the user step by step through testing the battery, starter, alternator, and cables to find the root cause of the problem and get the problem fixed correctly the first time. We'll start by running a test on the battery pack and then we'll disconnect the batteries from each other and we'll run the test individually. That's the best way to test the batteries. We'll then connect the large leads to the starter motor and we'll do a, perform a voltage drop test on the starter cables. Then we'll proceed to the starter test and we'll crank up the engine and make sure that the cranking RPM is good and the, and the cranking current is within reasonable range. We'll then next move the cables from the starter to the alternator. We'll perform an alternator voltage drop test on the cables at the rated output of the alternator. We'll then start the engine up and we'll perform an alternator test. We'll be testing the voltage regulation, the ripple, and the actual alternator current output. We're going to start by hitting the full system test button. The tester asked me if I want to start a new test or resume an old test. But if, if you're halfway through a test and you need to take a break for lunch or you're waiting for parts, you can go back in and, and resume an old test where you left off. I'm going to start a new test. The safety screen comes up. So we have a couple pages of boilerplate customer complaint checkboxes. So for example, if the driver says, my engine is a slow crank, we can check that checkbox. This just saves that information with a test data. It does not affect how the test is run. This is the second page of the customer complaint list. So there's more options for alternator and then other, for example, noisy component. Now we can enter the truck VIN that can be entered manually, or if you have a QR code, or a barcode, it can be read via the camera. Or if you have tested a truck recently, it stores the last few VIN numbers in memory, which can be chosen. There's an option for repair order ID, vehicle odometer, technician ID, and also an area for comments for the technician to make up to 300 characters. Now it's asking, does the vehicle have an auxiliary battery pack? This truck here does not, but if it did, it would walk the technician through testing all of those batteries also. It's now asking me how many batteries are in the starter pack. So there's two on this truck. It's now asking me to disassemble the starter pack and test the batteries individually. That is the most accurate way to test the battery pack. So let's do that. All right, I'm going to start by separating the batteries by removing the battery interconnects. So we can test the batteries individually. I start by removing the negative side first, then the positive side. I then need to install the battery adapters. But the t what you never want to do is test the battery by connecting the clamps to the steel bolt. That'll give you a false reading. Then we'll tighten the adapters. And then connect our test leads to the battery. All right, it's now prompting me to do a visual battery inspection. Inspect battery for dirt and cracks, inspect battery posts and connections. So I check those off as they're completed. There's also an option for choosing a damaged battery that cannot be tested. Okay, now I'm gonna select the battery rating. These batteries are 925 CCA. So you have the option to choose other ratings like MCA, CA, and EN. I'm now going to select the battery type. I have a choice of standard flooded, AGM, or two flat plate options for AGM, North Star and Odyssey. This is an AGM battery. I am then going to measure the temperature of the battery by pointing the load module at the battery. Measure 73 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's start the test. Okay, this battery tests good. The measured CCA is 779, so it has a state of health of 84% and a state of charge of 82%. So now it's asking us to test the next battery. I'm going to connect my leads to the second battery. Again, I'm going to do a visual inspection of the battery and check those off as inspected. Or you remember the CCA of the first battery I entered. So this one's also a 925 CCA. I'm going to enter it as an AGM battery. And then we'll also measure the temperature again of the battery. 73 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll test the battery. 
All right, this battery also tests good. It has a measured CCA of 794, sort of state of health of 86%, and a state of charge of 84%. So the ba both batteries test good, so we're gonna reassemble the battery pack and continue. It shows zero batteries replaced. All right, we're gonna tighten the positive side first. Now we're gonna reconnect the tester to the battery pack. We're gonna connect both the large leads and the small leads. And then we're gonna run a test on the state of charge of the battery pack. If it's below 75% state of charge, we'll require the technician to charge the battery pack before proceeding. As a low state of charge battery pack can produce faulty alternator and starter test results. Also during the test, we're gonna be measuring the voltage drop of the interconnects on the battery. So let me connect the tester to the battery pack. Connect the small leads to the tester. Okay, now that we're connected to the battery pack, let's continue. Again, we're doing a visual inspection for dirt, cracks, uh, battery post connections, make sure they're tight. We're gonna enter the battery type again as AGM. We'll measure the battery pack temperature, 73 Fahrenheit. And let's do the test. So the battery pack passed. So it has an 82% state of charge. If it was below 75%, again, it would require us to charge the battery pack. The voltage drop on the battery pack interconnects are zero. So these are very good. They're very short and uh, very large interconnects. So zero voltage drop, which is, which is excellent. All right, we're gonna move to the starter test. So I'm gonna go under the truck and inspect the, the starter for loose connections, make the connection to the starter motor. So I'm going to take the load module with me underneath the truck and connect it to the starter motor while I leave the, the small leads connected to the battery pack. Okay, now we're going to continue to test the starter cable voltage drop. Okay, it's now asking me to select the engine type and engine displacement. This is a 6.7 liter diesel engine. And this menu here applies the proper voltage drop pass-fail criteria compliant with RP129B. Okay, this truck has failed the voltage drop test on the starter cables. It has a positive voltage drop of 0.469, a negative of 0.539, for a total voltage drop of a little over one volt. So that fails. So the tester is gonna ask us to make a repair, and then we'll loop back around and test our repair to see if it passes. I've made the repair. I'm gonna retest now. Start the test. Okay, it says the voltage drop is still out of spec. So my repair did not fix the problem. An option on this test to accept the starter cable voltage drop as is and proceed with the test. As occasionally, some new trucks even new would not pass this test. As long as the technician is confident that the voltage drop is in good shape, he can pass the test, move on. Now it's asking, does the vehicle crank? This vehicle does, so I'm gonna choose yes, and we're gonna to proceed to the starter test. If the vehicle did not crank, I would choose no, and the tester will walk the technician down the path of troubleshooting the start and able circuit. Here we start. Now I'll turn the key to the run position, and we'll let the modules boot up, and the grid heater or glow plug cycle on and off if the truck has those. The tester is asking me to enter the number of cylinders. This is a six cylinder. The tester needs this information to calculate the proper cranking RPM. Here are the results of our starter test. The cranking volts was 11.14, cranking current 517, cranking RPM 181. It has a crank time a little over one second. If the crank time is excessive, say for example over three seconds, that could indicate a fuel delivery problem and not an electrical system problem. So since the RPM is greater than 80, the starter passes. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the alternator portion of the test. We're gonna do a visual inspection of the belt for proper tension and glazing, and also inspect the cables for looser corroded connections. We're ready to test the voltage drop on the alternator cables, so I need to move the large clamps from the starter motor to the alternator. Okay, I have the cables connected to the alternator. Let's proceed. 
Okay, we're gonna test the cable voltage drop at the rated alternator output. So I need to enter the rated alternator output, which is 160 amps, and then start the test. Okay, the alternator cable voltage drop passes. The positive side had 0.228, negative side 0.216 for a total voltage drop of 0.444. So the alternator circuit is good to 179 amps. That exceeds the rated output of the alternator and therefore is good. Next, we're going to test the alternator output, voltage regulation, and ripple. It's taking some measurements now. I'll go turn the key to the run position. The ECU is booted up and the grid heater is cycled on and off. I'm going to hit OK. Start engine. Hold the engine at 1,000 RPM. If it, if it detects excessive current, it'll have you wait. So excessive current has gone away. So we're holding at 1,000 RPM. Once this voltage is stable, we'll press, press when stable. Now I'll rev to governor speed and hold there. Okay, here are our results. Voltage regulation was 14.36 will fail for too low a regulation or too high a regulation. That is within limits. Diodes, 149 millivolts of ripple. That's below our maximum amount. Charging current, 148 amps. So that's actual alternator current output. So what we're doing there to measure the output is when the engine starts, we're using the alternator cable as a shunt to measure the current going back into the truck. And then we can supplement loading the alternator by turning out up to 120 amps on, on our tester to stress the electrical system and measure the actual alternator output. So as long as the alternator output is above 66 percent of the rated output, then the alternator tests good because any single failure in the alternator will cause the output to drop below 66 percent. So hit exit. So this is a system test summary. Everything passed except the starter cable voltage drop and we accepted that as is. So at the end of the test, the technician can check off any parts replaced or add any comments up to 300 characters. The test is now completed.